shortly. But now I'm excited to tell you that that technology can effortlessly fit in this backpack. But it's actually not in this backpack. I like to just carry it on me. So I'm simply going to tap to take off and wide 85 degrees through the water. So you feel. Wow. Did DJI just launch everything I've ever wanted in a drone? Maybe. First, I'll have to do a comprehensive review. Okay, now for the comprehensive review. Seems pretty cool. Full disclosure, as always, I'm not hired. I'm not being paid by DJI to make this video. This is not an endorsement or an advertisement for their product. If it sucks, I'll tell you it sucks. All right, so this is it. This is the drone with the battery put in it fully uh, extended. But where it gets interesting is what happens when you fold this thing up. This is the entire drone right here. This is it. This is the whole thing. It's tiny. Maybe it might even, it literally fits. Can you see that? It literally fits in my pocket. This is the drone. Now, despite the fact that it fits into my pocket, which makes me feel like I'm living in the future, it, uh, it doesn't feel like a toy. It doesn't feel plasticky. It doesn't feel cheap. This feels more like a transformer, like a Michael Bay movie prop. <laughs> Heavy, solid, secure, metally, not cheap or light or plasticky. Now, one thing that's super cool about this is that you never have to take the propellers off. See, this is what they look like. You don't even have to spread them apart like that. The centripetal force, once this thing starts spinning, aligns them perfectly. On the Phantom 4, that was one of the, you always had to clip them on or clip them off. Top two arms fold out like this. And then these bottom two arms, they fold down like this. It's, uh, the design feels nothing short of just genius. I'm telling you, like a transformer from the future. Also, even though the DJI Phantom 4 is my main drone, this thing is a joke. And I've told them that, I don't really understand. The way it holds onto your phone is like, feels like it was tacked on. It's, it feels way, way bigger than it needs to be. And it's just not a very ergonomic or like practical controller. I don't understand why this thing needs to be so huge. Look it. This controller is the same size as this, but the new controller, look at this thing. The last hardware comparison I want to do before I start playing with this thing is comparing it to the Phantom 4. This is the Mavic and this is the Phantom 4. I mean, the size difference is astonishing. All right, this is like the stupidest thing you could do, but, uh, well, I've never flown a drone in this studio without either getting hurt or breaking the drone, but they really went on and on about how this thing can fly well indoors, so I'm gonna give it like a, a quick try. GPS in here or anything, it's just stay. I don't even have the controller. Are you seeing this? Look, that's not CGI. It's just staying there. In perfect position. It's a miracle. That is outrageous. That was highly impressive. It just went up and stayed in the exact position. So how these things work outdoors is they use a satellite, GPS, to know where to stay. But when they're indoors, there are no satellites. It's just like, wow. 
Okie dokie, time for some real world tests here. Now, first of all, no backpack. Carried it in this little pouch thing, which honestly, this is an official DJI pouch, but I'll never use this pouch again. It doesn't need all this extra like padding and fluff. Now the setup. Arm out, arm out, arm down, arm down. Drone, down. Nah. All right, powering up. Okay, shit's on. Controller's on. Camera connect. Calibrate. I gotta calibrate it. This is always such a buzz kill. Okay, here we go, ready to fly. I need somebody to help me film. Do you need someone to help you film? Help you film with me, bro. I think we're about to get in trouble. Well, this is a different pier. It's more deserted out here, so the cops don't come out here to bother you. Here's Sean. Hey, do you need somebody to help you film? Yeah, let's do this. The first voyage of the DJI Mavic Pro in the wild, not in my office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's gone. Wow. Feels good so far. Where is it? Um, I don't know. Okay, the control feels really responsive. And I actually prefer this controller to the Phantom 4 controller. I feel like I've got much more precision control. The image is more narrow than it is on a Phantom. Like, it's not as wide like the GoPro is, which is, I like the wide angle. But I'm sure it will yield a better image. It's far from me right now, it's very far. And it is handling this like a champ. All right, I got a warning that said high wind velocity. This thing's tiny. How it can handle this wind, I don't know. If the image, if the image, that I, when I look at it on my computer, if it's 75% if it's as good as the Phantom 4, I'll never use the Phantom 4 again. Think that stuff. It's just nice having this dual display because then the phone becomes a monitor and up here becomes all the critical data. This is an extremely complicated maneuver because feel the wind, hear the wind. I'm gonna try to land See it. the wind. See the wind. Let's see how steady it is in the wind. All right, now I'm gonna land it. What? <laughs> oh, I'm so psyched about this thing, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> My official review for this thing is that if the video that I'm about to, if the video that's on this is even close to what the Phantom 4 looked like, this will be my new favorite drone and what I think is the best drone I've ever used. Piece of camera equipment I've ever used. 